لاغية فيها عين جارية فيها سرر مرفوعة وأكواب موضوعة ونمارق مصفوفة وزرابي مبثوثة أفلا ينظرون إلى الإبل كيف خلقت وإلى السماء كيف رفعت وإلى الجبال كيف نصبت وإلى الأرض كيف سطحت فذكر إنما أنت مذكر لست عليهم بمسيطر إلا من تولى وكفر فيعذبه الله العذاب الأكبر إن إلينا إيابهم ثم إن علينا حسابهم Forgive me for my pronunciations I'm not one of the best reciters Truly the religion with Allah is Islam Those who were given the scriptures, Jews and Christianity Did not defer except out of mutual jealousy After knowledge had come to them And whoever disbelieves in the ayah, the proofs, evidence and verses, signs and revelation Etc. of Allah Then surely Allah is swift in calling to account so if they dispute with you, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Say, I have admitted myself to Allah in Islam. And those who follow me, and say to those who were given the scripture, Jews and Christ Christians, and to those who are illiterates, Arabs, pagans, do you also submit yourself to Allah in Islam? If they do, they are rightly guided but if they turn away, your duty is only to convey the message. And Allah is all seer of his slaves. Jazakallah uh, khair. Assalamu alaikum. And when translated in English, it means peace be upon you. I use this assalamu alaikum because this is according to the Islamic religion. This is the greatest of Moses, Abraham, Isaiah, and Nehemiah, and all of them say assalamu alaikum. In Arabic, assalamu alaikum. In Hebrew, shalom alaikum. So in actuality, it's the same thing. Uh, my name is Ahmed Muhammad. Um, I'm a resident of uh, Seattle, inshallah. And I'm a da'i. Da'i means I'm um, you know, a person who invites into Islam. And I just briefly met Mr. Leon, gentleman, very humble, very soft-spoken, very understanding. And this is the kind of people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have already mentioned in the Quran that we have to speak with. The Quran mentioned the quality of a person like uh, Brother Leon. When Allah said, وَلَتَجِدَنَّ أَكْرَبَهُمْ مَوَدَّ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَلَّذِينَ كَعَلُوا إِنَّا نَصَارًا ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ مِنْهُمْ كِسِّسِينَ وَرُخُبَانًا وَأَنَّهُمْ لَا يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ The nearest in law of all Muslims, the nearest to you, O oh Muslims, in love to the men of the old world world, are those who call themselves the Christians. This is because these are people who are not arrogant, people who are humble, who have renounced the world. So I'm very glad that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have seen fit to give us this opportunity. Inshallah, the topic as it was announced, the origin of Islam and the origin of Christianity. Inshallah, we shall do justice to this uh, topic, which I know many Muslims and Christians are looking forward to, you know, bridge the gap. So inshallah, I will stop here until when it's time for me to do my service. I will inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Picked up this information from a book outside of the Bible it's called The Bible Through the Ages. It's published by Reader's Digest, 1989 version. And this book is a grouping of several scholars who are either affiliated with, not, with Reader's Digest or not affiliated. Most importantly, or I should say most of them are affiliated with colleges and universities throughout the world, uh, in America and outside of America. And this is what they have to say. And as well, you can find this book in any one of your local libraries here in Seattle. It states that based on their research, the unity of the scriptures is one of the most remarkable in the sense that the books were written over a period of at least 1,200 years by a large number of diverse authors in several languages, mainly Hebrew, Aramaic, and in the Greek. 
Hebrew and Aramaic in the Old Testament, Greek in the New Testament. All the books bear witness, witness fundamentally to the same understanding of the nature of God. Mainly that God is a God who acts. God is a God who redeems. God is one who gives hope. They go on to further state that the Old Testament can be regarded as the preparation of the gospel of Christ. The four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, can be regarded as the manifestation or they acknowledge testimony of these disciples who later became apostles. And in their testimony, they are giving their story and their account of the manifestation of of the gospel of Christ. As well, the book of Acts of the Apostle narrates the early propagation, Between. 5th and the 2nd century BC. And then it goes on to talk about the latter part, which is the writings, which were established, I think, shortly after that, where they would have been the last writings that would have been established in the canon. But basically, you get the basic point I'm making is that there was some kind of a scholarly study and there have been findings unearthed from archaeologists who have found various uh, scripture in its original form so that what you and I now have in a Bible form, a book form, through the process of time, establishment of cuneiform and various other written languages all the way up until today with the printing press and the process in which that had to undertake as well as many other historical events have led to what you and I now have access to which we call the Bible or the book in this form. When you look at the book, the book is very much a example of supernatural origin in that it was inspired Timothy says all scripture is given by inspiration of God. All biblical Bible scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for reproof, for doctrine, for reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness that the person of God, the man of God, will be perfect or mature, in other words, lacking nothing. So therefore, this is what I'd like to put forth to you today. According to Genesis chapter 1, we can see when we look at the book that God created all that has been created. All that can be created, God created it. The heavens and the earth, it says in chapter 1. Chapter 2, it introduces the fact that there is one who is called Lord God. Chapter 2. I want to read that to you. But I want to start with verse 1, chapter 1, excuse me. Verse 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. Darkness was Anything on Anything else they did by faith what God told them to do. This is what the testimony is giving us an account of. And it says, according to Joshua chapter 5, verse 13 through 15, it came to pass that when Joshua was by Jericho, he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, a man stood opposite him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, are you for us? or for our adversaries. And this person said, no, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshiped and said to him, what does my Lord say to his servant? Then the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, take your sandal off your feet for the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. Many people misuse that scripture and think that that is someone else speaking about the Lord. But again, remember what I said earlier, that the word Lord is translated as Jehovah. And since Elohim is speaking not of an individual, but of plural, of a class of individuals that have the same essence of Godhood. Lord can speak of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit synonymously, individually, and at any time. And when you look at the Old Testament scripture, you'll see that whenever the word or the title God is used, we don't know, for example, unless it is specifically noted, which one is specifically noted. So it could be all three speaking in certain instances. It could be one. We don't know. And it is purposely done that way. 